All right, this is the design process, and the design process is something that's used every day uh, by people all over the world with many different occupations, um, and it's very often used in engineering whenever we're trying to design something, something as simple as the chair you're sitting in right now, or something as complex as um, this picture here of a satellite that, that orbits the Earth. This is the design process, and it is uh, given to you here in five, five or six um, different steps. Here you see the design process kind of laid out for you. Um, you go through, you start up there at the red, consider the problem, and then you go through the series of steps which we're going to talk about in this slideshow, and then at the end you decide whether you need to redesign or whether you're done. And so uh, we're going to start now with consider the problem. When you're considering the problem, you're trying to think about what the problem is that you're trying to solve. And so, uh, if we're talking about inventions, um, famous inventors all um, invented their inventions like the light bulb and the telephone and the printing press based off of problems that they had from their life. Um, and so, the, the, if you're going to create something, you need to think of a problem that you may have had in your own life and then go from there. Um, and you want to be able to describe the results you want to get. So, um, an example that I use in class is we want to create a paper airplane that flies 50 feet. The problem is you need to create a paper airplane for class to race against, to um, compete against other students. The results are you want to get that paper airplane to go 50 feet. After you have an idea of what you want to, what you want to get out of it, then you can go to um, another source and research solutions. So that's our next step. When you're researching the solutions, you're basically looking into what other people have done. Now, some people see this as copying, um, but I look at it as a way to just um, see what, what what's out there, what's already been done, um, so that maybe you don't copy someone's idea, that you kind of come up with your very own idea. Um, and so whenever you're, you're researching solutions, you're, you're you know going to the store and seeing how other people have created their products. You're going on the internet, like in this example, if you're making a paper airplane, go on the internet, see how other people make paper airplanes. Get an idea of what works, what doesn't work before you really put your, your, your uh, sweat into it and, and try to figure out what to do next. So this is research the solutions. You're, you're collecting information needed to design. You're also kind of coming up with maybe some ideas of plans other people have done so that you can kind of build off of those plans. The next step is design and develop. And this is the really hands-on part. The first two parts have been thinking and planning. This is now the part where you actually get into putting things together. You decide on one solution to solve the problem. So if you've looked online, you've looked at many different paper airplanes, and those one that keeps on coming up is one that flies far, you know that's the dart-style plane, then that's what you will decide to make. And so now you get your paper, you get whatever other supplies you need to create it, and you, you begin to put it together. After you've created it, put it together, now you're going to run tests on it. You're going to try to figure out if this works. And so you're going to take your paper airplane, you're going to throw it as far as you can throw it, and don't just do it once. You want to run as many as you can to kind of get an idea of, of, of is it working the way I want it to work or is it not? If it is, then you are, you're good to go. Um, and we'll talk about that in the next step. Um, evaluating results is where you decide, did it work well? or does it need to be changed? If it worked well, of course, you're done. You have gone through the design process and it's produced whatever result that you wanted to produce. Um, but often in the design process, things don't work exactly how we want, especially the first time. And so you decide what needs to be changed and then you redesign if, it, if it's needed. And um, we're gonna go, I'll show you that in this, this diagram here in the next slide. Uh, for the paper airplane, we basically ask ourselves, how far did the plane go? Um, if redesigned, can we make it go further? And if, if you the answer to that question is yes, then you need to go through the process again. So let's review the process, and then we'll talk a little bit about redesigning. The first step is consider the problem. Think about what you want your invention to do. If you're creating something, uh, we used an example in class called the Pet Washer 5000. The problem is my cat or my dog gets dirty often and I always have to clean them and it's a lot of work. So you research solutions. You look into what 
can be done. Maybe you go to PetSmart and you see what products are already out there and ways that you can build on them. You see what kind of materials you could use, um, see what other kind of plans people have come up with, and then you go on your own and, and, and you design and develop. And this is where you put all that, that stuff together and um, you decide on one idea. We're going to create a tunnel that the pet can walk through and it cleans them by the end. Then you test your solution. You actually put the pet through the uh, Pet Washer 5000 and see if it works. If it does, you're done. You have a product that you're ready to either use yourself or show to other people and get them to buy it. Um, or you have a, a uh, design prototype that needs to basically be redesigned. And so what you do is you look at what part of that design that you make needs needs to be redesigned. Maybe it's the hoses on the Pet Washer 5000. So you go back through and you say, what's the problem with the hoses? What are some solutions I could come up with? You design and develop, you test your solution, and then you see if that solution worked. And if it did, you're done. And if not, you need to go through it again. This process can be done over and over again. And, and as with many famous inventors, they the, the, the more times they went through it, the better their invention got. Um, so, um, Thomas Edison had a, a saying that genius is 1% um, inspiration and 99% perspiration. Uh, basically saying that it's, it's a lot of hard work to, uh, to invent or create things or design things. But um, as you can see, um, it's, it, it's very worth it in the end. Now we have um, lights shining down on us because of, of Thomas Edison and um, many other uh, things that we can be thankful for because of all of the work of, of so many people to go through the design process. So um, that is the design process.